It's Elizabeth here. Hi, Elizabeth. Hello, follow BTC News. Thank you all so much for making time out of your sleep or busy work days to join us on this conversation. Um, we'll just wait a few more minutes for people to join. The latest I heard is we're expecting 10 participants. Um, but again, we've got three more minutes. So we'll, I'm just going to mute and see who comes in at this point. And now that I see we have 18 participants, so the list is growing. I believe a large number of them are just here to listen, not so much talk. Sounds good. I, I believe we're good to start whenever you guys are. Say that again? I believe we're good to start here whenever you guys are ready. Okay, I think we're just waiting on a few others. Okay, I think we're going to get started here. Um, I need to send, let me put uh, some talking points in here. Um, so that we can be organized and as structured and productive as possible. Um, what we can do is I'm gonna put these discussion points. You can address some of these and we'll give everyone say five minutes. And I'd first like to stay, um, 
be great if everyone can introduce themselves and what your position is in the community. And then um, we will hear from uh, So let me just send this chat. Okay, so three pretty high level bullet points. I think what we need to try, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay, awesome. So what we're trying to accomplish today is A, have a conversation with um, your key witnesses here, your stakeholders, you're committed to, committed to the STEAM blockchain. And so this is a, a good conversation, our first conversation really on a very personal level um, we understand that there's been a lot going on the last couple of weeks. And so the goal here is to really introduce everyone, let Justin and Roy hear from you all and find a way to come together and uh, create a, a way to move forward. And so, you know, not saying that we're going to have any final, you know, next steps, but I think this is a good starting point is to address your key concerns. And then we can uh, address those concerns and hopefully find a way to move forward. So with that, um, we can just go in the list. Uh, Frederic looks like his first. I don't know because there's some that are phone numbers. Um, we'll just have to go down the list. But if we can, you know, introduce yourself, who you are to the Steam blockchain, and, you know, the key points that you would like to address tonight or today. All right. Uh, do you hear me well? Yes. All right, this is uh, Frederick here uh, from Norway. Sorry if it's uh, if I'm groggy because it's 3 a.m. here, but I couldn't miss this meeting. Um, so I've been on the Steam blockchain for about three years. Uh, when I first joined, I was still working at the European Space Agency with technology transfer, but I thought I would learn some blockchain and also write here. I've been running one of the dApps on Steam. Uh, that's a WordPress uh, plugin that connects any WordPress-based blog to Steam and provides something that's a bit like a discus alternative where you can log in with a Steam account and engage. But you can also store your content to Steam and have uh, two-way integration. Um, we've also been a consensus witness, although that position is continuously changing right now, but we, we were a consensus witness. Um, and our main desire is to know that there is a decentralized blockchain that we can build on and trust that we have the full opportunity to pursue the ambitions that we set for ourselves to provide a open and transparent social platform where users can both be a part and own a part and where the future of that chain is decided by the community and the user base uh, without any potential uh, for any single entity to steer or select uh, the, the direction, which I guess opens up for a lot of what's been going on, but at least that's just a brief introduction of where I am coming from in all of this. Great. Thank you so much, uh, Frederick. Appreciate that. Okay, next is the phone number with one six six one seven four. Could you please tell us who you are and your role with Steam? So maybe there's some on here that are not going to uh, chime in. They're just listening. So I guess at this point, just. Like three speak, I see, I see you have your microphone. Um, do you want to go ahead and talk? Yes, hello. Uh, this is Pat Starkus from three speak. Uh, three speaks a video platform on Steam. Um, thanks for having the audience with us. Appreciate your time and everything, and hope we can come to a, um, a reasonable win win out of this. I can see one, I think. I think, I think several people in the room can see one. I think it's very fine. I think the negotiation that we have to talk about, the discussions we have to have are very um, particular right now based on the events over the last week. Um, but I, I will say that I think there's something there. I also think in this meeting, I, I don't think we should come to conclusions at the moment. I think we should just treat this as 
uh, get to know each other initial talk, maybe try to talk about where our red lines are so we can try to understand where each other stand. Uh, but I don't think we need to be too confrontational, at least I'll, I'll try not to be at this stage on where the red lines can't be moved. And I think we should keep open minds and hopefully be able to come to some conclusions that result in a win-win. That's all from me for now. Great. Thank you for that, Matt. Matt, I really appreciate it. Um, looks like Cervantes, you're next in line with speaking capabilities here. Um, I think uh, from our point of view, we, uh, we, we kind of anticipated that with the town hall being a place for everyone to share their positions and also to share who they are and what they believe, uh, we thought it would be more productive to have a more selected few uh, try to represent the group and what we've been observing and thinking over the last uh, two or so weeks. Okay, so who then here is um, speaking on behalf of the community and the witnesses, just so we can know and keep this as organized and let people, you know, everyone who wants to say something, they get their chance. I just don't know who that is. Hi, everybody. I'm a follow BTC News. I am a uh, community consensus witness. And I'm just here uh, because we were invited to uh, maybe listen to uh, Justin soon. And like uh, Elizabeth had said, to start hearing some of the options uh, that we can go through to uh, get steam back uh, how it needs to be. Great, thank you for that. Um, again, not sure who all wants who all is going to be speaking here, so I can't really organize this um, to call yeah, on so, folks. Sorry to chime in, Elizabeth. This is Roy. Uh, I think we have a lot of people here. <laughs> Probably we cannot give uh, five minutes for every single one of that uh, for intro. I can intro whenever they speak uh, on the go, but uh, I guess we can. What do you think about everybody can just uh, you know chime in to start so about some of the. Uh, like statements or what the position is for the time's perspective. Hi, Roy. Uh, it's follow BTC News again, unless somebody else wanted to, to say something real first, but going with what Roy was saying, maybe we can just jump on in here because it seems to be quite a few people. Yeah, it's uh, getting more and more people here. Yeah, I think, <clears throat> excuse me, I think one main issue that, uh, a lot of the folks that I communicate with on the platform, one main issue we have right now is we would love to possibly talk to Justin uh, about first and foremost getting a retraction on the public statement of calling the community consensus witnesses hackers on a public platform like he did. It's, it's a very important uh, at least to my voters, uh, you know, it, it, on the platform, which represents a large amount of the community and quite a few of the other consensus witnesses, th that's one fine point that, that a lot of them, uh, including myself personally, would like to see that retracted. I think um, it would be. I think it would be a beneficial start for whoever wants to talk um, initially to to talk about what they think the win-win scenario looks like, a way that Tron and Steam may be able to work together. Um, let's try and focus on the positives for now, and um, also it'd be very interesting to hear Tron's point of view on what they see as a win-win, just to kind of kick this off. So we have got some kind of reference point to start from. I, I don't think we should go into the negatives of things just yet. I think that'll be that will come a bit later on. So if no one else is going to say anything, um, it would be interesting to hear from from Tron, and just give us a, a quick bit of information about you guys as well, about where you stand on this and what your view is is of the situation at the moment. 
Hello, my name is Roland. I'm a consensus witness. Listen, guys, you invited us to a meeting, rescheduled the meeting one day in advance. There is clearly something you guys want to tell us. Please take the lead and tell your view of the situation. Thank you. Hey, Justin, you want to get started? And uh, before Justin get, uh, jump, can jump in, let me give a, a reason because uh, a list for a reschedule the meeting because, uh, you know, apparently we always want to keep a trans communication channel open. And by the way, to self-intro a bit, my name is Roy. I work for Tron. Um, so that, uh, you know, we hear a lot of uh, community feedbacks and apparently the, com uh, the communication would not be as transparent uh, as, uh, as it could be comparing to this kind of open channel and talk. So that's why we uh, we reschedule this and make it a, uh, with the community in mind uh, to put this as a priority to talk to everyone. And uh, Justin, uh, Justin is very hard to get hold of, but I secured one hour of Justin's time to just to, you know, just grab him to talk to everyone about his positioning, his vision, and, uh, you know, his idea behind everything. And so that you can understand better about, you know, how Justin, uh, views about this uh, uh, overall situation and, and uh, going forward. Justin? Hi, everyone. So I think we, um, both sides, we don't have actually conflicts at all. So our, on our side, we don't have like any, we don't want to pursue like governance, you know? So basically we want to stay neutral too, to give back the, the, um, basically the, the, the vote to community. So we, we want to stay neutral too. The only reason why we vote is because our fund got fr frozen in the first place. If, um, so basically the, the bottom line for us, as long as our fund is uh, secure, uh, we don't have like any other uh, demands basically. And we, we want to like withdraw like our vote also ASAP to um, give the rights like back to the community with this. And we basically, we just want to stay neutral, like anything in the community, we don't want to intervene just like finance do. I mean, we don't want to intervene like anything as long as our stake is fine. And also um, our token, basically we are buy, buying by our hard earned money, you know? So we have like all the legal documents to to pre present to you guys even to prove like our fund is le like legally owned by us. I, I know there's a lot of the maybe history between you guys and that, right? So you, you can like go after him. I mean, that's the conflict between you and that, but it's not you and me, right? So you guys didn't barely know me. So, so basically my position is very simple. Like, for example, like you guys talk about like uh, retraction of those announcements. I, th I think it's completely okay for me. The only thing we want to guarantee here is the safety of the exchange of our funds. Basically, that's the, the only thing we need. Rest of them, I, I think we ba basically stay like very neutral. Um, um, we, we just want um, community to play on their end. So. I think basically no changes. It's just like before. Could I could I ask? Um, I think I think one of the questions that, that would follow on from that is, what is your vision of how we secure the chain in a way that we don't have to trust any party? Um, if 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 what you're saying is the case, if if you have full control of the funds, how do we ensure a trustless um, situation on the train on the chain such that there won't be a hostile takeover or anything like that? Is it oh, just sure. trust, sure, trust sure. word of mouth or is, or is there going to be some written contract or a hard code into the chain? How do you see that? Yeah, sure. So basically, first of all, you need to know me, you know, my, my purpose getting into the steam is not like try to control steam network or anything. I'm just a businessman, businessman, not for politics. You know, I'm not like interested in power at all. I just want to make money. So, so basically that's my idea, you know? So for example, like I buy like my steam token, use my money, right? I want steam to be better so I can sell the money eventually and make money. So that's like my purpose to get into 
steam in the first place is very simple, right? I don't pursue like any governance rights or I don't want to change the status quo of Steamy 2. I just want Steam to be better and uh, I can make money. So basically that's my like personal purpose on, on all this. And also the second thing I can follow up with your questions. I, I think eventually, I mean, after this, after we withdraw the votes, we will deposit uh, most of our tokens to exchange and seek for exit. So I, I don't think we, we will like continuous to vote or intervene to the governance of the network. That's not like our purpose, I mean, in the first place. So e eventually, I mean, I would like to like give back all my uh, Steam token sell on the market to give back to the community as long as I get a return on my investment, right? So basically that's, that's the only position I have. Um, one thing uh, that was one of our first questions after this acquisition, and I, I believe we tried to get it us to you during the AMA that you had with Ned, was to what extent you were, one, uh, informed about the promises that was made with regards to this stake by the former ownership, namely that one, it should not be used in governance voting, and two, that it would be used to further decentralize the chain and grow the Steam community or the Steam blockchain. And I, I saw in your recent post that uh, you mentioned that these tokens would still be used for the sake of community. So I would like to know how you see that happening or what plans you would have in that regard. But first of all, were you aware of those promises earlier on before the purchase? Yeah, sure. Um, I want to make like uh, several points clear. First of all, I know you guys have lots of the history of NAT. Some of you may think that those tokens is not like the token is illegal, it's a pre mine or anything, right? But this is, has nothing to do with me. So basically we purchased the token with, with the hard money we have, you know? So, so basically we are like you guys, everybody. I buy basically the token from the markets. So that's why you, you guys need to understand my, my stand here. So definitely I don't want like any of my private property is phrased by anyone. It's just like everyone do, you know. I think in the Steam network, nobody wants their funds to be froze. If they buy it from, especially if they buy it from market. Um, that's the first point. The second point, I think we, our interests align with Steam commu community. Um, the reason is very simple. Is the only reason um, I get into the Steam is I want Steam to be better, to have lots of the D apps, to have lots of the liquidities, right? So we can eventually make money out of it. It's just like a VC fund invests in a startup, right? Startup, do, startup doing good, the valuation increase, so I can exit, right? See, but money. sorry, I'm a Netuo, so I'm a yeah. witness and developer. Yeah. But uh, you, you keep going back to the, uh, the business side of things and saying that you're just trying to make money. Yeah. But you realize, I mean, we're volunteers. Every single one of us are witness volunteers that have been elected by the community, you know, with their stake. So whenever you come in and you encourage three of the largest exchanges to use customer funds that may or may not be legal, but we don't really need to go into that, to circumvent the governance on the network, how can you say, number one, that you're looking out for the STEAM community, uh, uh, you know, that's crazy to me. But then you're also going to make your plan work out by changing the power down time of powered up stake to less than one day. I'm not going to go ahead into all the technical details of why that's a very poor decision that actually destroys the security and confidence of the blockchain. Maybe you can talk to your tech lead. They can kind of give you some hints and, you know, point you in the right direction there. But it's absolutely not in the interest of the steam community and it's completely against the status quo so it's it's the opposite of what you're trying to tell us and then at the same time you're telling us that you're a businessman that's here to try to make money off of steam i, I don't know that your interests are aligning i'll, I'll let you respond 
Yeah, um, um, I, your name is Nate, Nate Huso. Um, Ned so, Huso, Andrew, uh, whatever you want to refer to. Yeah, Ned Huso. Um, so basically we won't like, I don't think we're gonna like make everybody's account like power down. So we will only let the, like the accounts like limit you to, to exchange account and um, the account like participate in the votes to, to, to reduce the power down time. So it's not like affects like and everybody. Could I could I ask um, in your mind in your 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 view on this? How long is the time frame that you're thinking in terms of something you want to kind of create value over time, and then eventually, like you said before, cash out your stake or whatever it is after it's gone up in in price? What's your time frame on that? And and kind of you know, would you be willing in in the same way as a startup? to to hold that on the chain guaranteed for a certain amount of time before you're allowed to cash out is that is that something you you might consider um first of all i think we want to like follow like the before right uh we have like, like lots of the work like left to do i think we already share like everybody uh in the roadmap um so i think basically my plan right now is just to execute like finish the, the the roadmap I present to the community. But I mean, is is that in your view? Is that a, a multi-year thing? Is this something that you're looking to be in Steam for several years for? Is this something that you may want to to remove your stake in a few months, for example? Oh, that's definitely. I mean, it's depend depends on you guys. You know, um, basically at the beginning, I want to like invest, maybe stay for years. But after like all those fights, I mean, I, I would rather maybe actually like as soon as possible, some of the stake for sure to get my investment back. back. And also, I think this is a good thing. Also reduce you guys the concern. Uh, we will intervene in the network governance, right? So, so that's something is not my point of view and also basically decided by the witness and decided by the community how much you want me to contribute to the network is also decided by you. But uh, there was one question that uh, I really wanted to get the answer to, which was, were you aware of, of the fact that Ned Scott and Dan Larimer, since the founding of Steam It Inc, had made promises on behalf of Steam It Inc that the stake would first of all be non-voting, but more importantly in this context, be used to grow the Steam ecosystem and to and to further decentralize the chain. Because one of the objections that many in this room have is that they don't view it as something that was just could just be sold like any other stake on, on the open market, but rather that anyone that bought Steam at Inc. also then buys into the same obligations that it has towards its community to live up to the promise that it's made because so many people invested hundreds of millions of dollars over these last few years based on that promise that this was fun to be used for decentralization. And so I think that's where the main conflict arises. So I think it's very important for us to know if you, when you were having those talks with Ned, knew that this stake had been promised for something else and was not really his to be sold uh, for profit. We 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 don't we we don't know like any of this until like you guys froze my phone basically. And, and uh, I mean the thing, the history like anything you guys with Nat we we also you you know I'm like basically a stranger. We also need like a written document like legal documents to to prove because we have all of this. Like we, when we do the transactions, we hire like a Finwick, one of the best like law firm. We, we do the, all the diligence we have. We, we have all the re written documents for how we purchase those tokens. And that's the, the only thing we, we, we see here. I mean, all the history is because I'm not a party involved in all, all these like talks, right? So you, so basically, I'm. Um, I have like no. 
basically uh, connections right, or right. any so, relations with all those things at all. Yeah, it's understandable. Not really part of the Steam community. You know? Yeah. I, mean, well, um, I think that's very useful. I'm just going to end on this. Uh, I think that's very good for us to hear. And I just want to make it clear that from many of the witnesses, in fact, most of the witnesses, the whole purpose of this freeze was to get that answer and to understand how you saw this stake and how you, if the same promises would apply that was made of them not voting. So I, I, I can understand and I would probably feel the same if I bought steak and that was frozen somewhere. But yeah, exactly. just understand that from our point of view, it was something that was all, always meant to be a temporary thing until we got that answer. And we really tried our best to get that answer through many channels, you know, for a week after the acquisition. Yeah, so yeah, so totally I'm um, I'm glad we, we have this conversation. So so basically for me, right? So I, I just I'm just like a random guy buying some stake. Yeah, so it sounds like kind of you got you got scammed by Ned, you know. So maybe you you entered into a deal that you might not have had all of the kind of facts surrounding what you got involved in, which is not really your fault, but I mean it, it happened. Yeah, exactly. I'd like I'd like to add here that, that that probably there is a lot of common ground in this point between um, Tron and the Steam community because we I think we all agree that whatever Tron was sold was not what the understanding was from the community and Ned was well aware of that um, and so there's definite common ground there in the future between both of us. It, coming from Ned as the CEO uh, or, or a major stakeholder in Steam It Inc., uh, you know, these promises were made from Steam It Inc. Uh, about this stake, these 65 million tokens. And if I understand correctly, uh, Justin, you're, you're commenting that you would like to, you know, transfer these tokens out to the exchanges as quick as possible and get them on the market. But we would like to see those funds go back into the Steam DAO and help fund development on the Steam chain like it was promised to do from Steam and Inc. Hi. Um, I don't know how my microphone is working. Um, my name is Arizim. Um, I wrote an open letter to you shortly after your acquisition is done. Uh, can, can, I, I can't hear you. The, the voice is really low. Okay. Um, let me. It, it would be good while, while that while that gets corrected. It would be good to go back to the point just made regards to how much you know. Are, are you looking to invest in Steam to to help development, and would you be willing to do that by something that we have called the SPS, which is the uh, Steam Proposal System? Uh, pardon. Are you, are you looking to invest in Steam development, essentially, and, and to what extent will you back that? And, and, and pl please understand that from our understanding, it was the, it was the, the stake, the Steam Inc. stake, that was supposed to be used to pay for that. Uh, maybe I can chime in for that a bit. I mean, I mean Justin is not fully aware of all the development uh, pipelines or existing projects on Steam or Steam it. Uh, but to your original point, you know, there might be somewhere uh, a contract or verbal or on the blog post or whichever between Ned and the community. But that material was never part of the purchase agreement, nor did Ned ever mention that. We are not aware of that kind of a, a history uh, through the deal. Nobody involved in the deal mentioned that, though they're obligated through the purchase agreement to tell us, you know, the uh, known contracts and stuff. So it's 100% Ned's obligation, I would say, if any, um, to fulfill whatever he promised, which we have no idea. That's, again, that's between Ned. Well, for, just, just to clarify, it would be between Steam It Inc. and the community because Steam It Inc. have issued these statements. I know Ned's issued them as well, but they've been issued via Steam It Inc. Again, that's nothing uh, in terms of documents or materialized to pass over to us. It's not within 
and we don't know that. Yeah, because and, we are um, not party when you negotiate all, all of these. Right. So, yeah. To add to that, can, point, I, can so, I have another try with my microphone? Does my microphone work now? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, my name is Sarah Zim. Um, I wrote an open letter to Justin right after the acquisition, basically stating the points about the governance and about those funds. Um, I I understand, uh, and I I also wrote in this post that I assume that Net did not give all information. Um, so we are at this point, Net basically uh, did not talk about prior agreements, which were made in the name of the company. These were image blog posts, these were not Net posts solely. It was in the entire history, it was the funds which are property of Schemit Inc. And when you buy Schemit Inc. and you buy the funds which are property with Schemit Inc., you buy the prior agreements that are affecting these funds. Not sure. So, so however you, you want to deal that over net, you have the contract with net. So net is responsible towards you, not towards us. Not and sure. I have to try no. so, so basically, we will make sure that prior agreement with any participant on the blockchain will be held. Yeah, we, we don't think we will take those responsibility because if you guys want me to take those responsibility, it should be like show prior to my acquisition. So 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 basically we you only- You did not tell us about your acquisition before. You did this in secret with- The that. acquisition is between so Steam and Inc, which is a private held exactly. company. Exactly. Exactly. So it's all between you, Steam and Inc and Net. We don't have anything to do with that. This is Marky. I, I want to speak up for something. Um, you guys bought a stake that had a contract tied behind it. And we have many way, um, places that we can show that this was disclosed, that this stake was used for development of the blockchain. Many people invested in this blockchain for that reason, that there was a large sum of steam that was going to be used to further development, pay for nodes, keep the system up and running in further development what you purchased um, is basically stolen goods. And if you purchased a stolen TV, um, you can't complain that I didn't know it was stolen or it's, I bought it, so it's mine. When, when you find out that it's stolen and was used something differently, um, it, it doesn't change the fact that you paid for it. Um, I, not I, in the US and I don't think anywhere. I, so I you think... bought a, a set of steak that was designed for a certain purpose. I think and now you're saying that you have no plans on doing development and you just want to dump it on the market. Well, I think I think that I, I need to uh, chime in a bit. So Marky, uh, I think the way our target is not Justin Sun. The target sounds like the center of the argument is Ned, if anything. The center um, of the argument has always been the ninja mine and Ned, but yes. Ned was part of Steam at all these um, promises were made by Steam and not by Ned. So sure. we can't scapegoat Ned. If, I think if, you have a legal claim against Ned because I believe he fraudulently gave you this deal, but everything to the community and everybody that invested dealt with Steam and Inc. And all those promises were made on behalf of Steam and Inc. Number one, I mean, I like to see these uh, beha uh, these announcements, and we're not aware of that. Like I said, and, there might be a lot. I think we need to see the Steam Inc. sign those contracts with you guys. That that's also something. Yeah, of we course. Can do with we have some time to collect them. They are all on the blockchain. In in hindsight, after this talk, someone we will provide you with a collection of statements over the years how these funds will be used by Steam Inc. And you are now Steam Inc. Before the, before the conversation gets too far off track, Justin, I, I would like to remind you as one of the developers responsible here, uh, you kind of used your position of power, which you have a little bit of followers on Twitter. I think you realize that you have a little bit of a community. And in my sense, you kind of abuse that by using the word, you know, hackers and trying to paint this whole thing in a very malicious light. Just the, the existence of this conversation going on right now should pretty much remove any doubt of the, you know, if this is malicious or not. This is something that was done in the nature of trying to protect the Steam blockchain. <clears throat> so essentially, will you make a solid guarantee to retract your statement of using the, you know, the term hackers in relating to the witnesses in this in this situation? 
I, I think today we're talking about more about we can make a wing wing, right? And I think that Justin made his position very clear, and uh, he's very very flexible in this current situation. I want to be supportive, make it a win win situation. I would I would suggest we can you know, and he also made a statement that he's willing to step back on the hacker statement or not, but because. Like he stated, the hacker statement or whatnot is really coming from the fact, you know, his hard-earned dollar paid for the tokens being free frozen without, you know, pre. Yeah, I mean, now now that he has the context and the understanding, and and you know, the information's been added, you can change your mind. You can, you know, make a new decision. I think will you stand by and retract that statement mind on both sides, right? I mean, that right now we're talking about a win-win situation. Let's, you know, there's no. I mean, we don't want to point fingers on what happened. He said, she said, it's not. Uh, I'm, I, I don't know if I really have, you know, much more desire for negotiations if a simple retraction of saying that this isn't malicious can't even be guaranteed because then what else can be guaranteed? That's that's pretty easy. You know, it's a tweet. You know, even, you know, Donald Trump can manage it. <laughs> so I can speak for Justin. I'll pass the mic to Justin to see what he wants to do with the mic, uh, the, 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 the tweets. But just the one before, I want to point out one thing. Like uh, previously, the community has been pretty um, reactive to what Justin said in early on PR, and these, these statements being removed. Right? It's just like the it shows that Justin is being willing to take actions. And I think let's focus on, I mean, I I pass the mic to 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 Justin to see what he thinks about these. Tweets, yeah, yeah, but... please, please. The, I mean, the the question the question was towards Justin, and as far as what I I think about issuing false uh, media reports and then retracting them, the damage is done the second that it goes out there. With the way the modern news reporting system works, everybody gets the alerts within the next couple of seconds. A lot of people go look at it, they get the information, and then y'all remove it off the internet but you still have 20 or 30 or 50 or 100, how, or however many people you have reading your tweets that are out there spreading word of mouth, and it, the damage is already done. So the retraction is good, and we appreciate it. That's a step in the right direction. Some may say that it's hiding your tracks, covering your tracks. But I think I would like to hear from Justin if he can make a commitment to using his Twitter platform to retract the hacker statement. And then we can, you know, we could go from there. That's just a very simple request. It's not even really a request. It's just an ask. So, so basically, I think today's talk is just to for the communication. Uh, we don't rush to like any cl conclusion or actions after today's meeting. What's the point of the meeting if there's going to be no action after it? Well, the first and foremost is that it's the very first time we have this open channel. I think we really appreciate your guys' time to make it and to talk to face to face. That's a good, you know, that's a good step towards the right direction instead of everybody guessing or thinking there's conspiracy here and there. I understand everybody is in emotional. Would, and would, you, would you say the Twitter platform being abused to paint a false narrative of a malicious attack by hackers going on is kind of creating that, you know, atmosphere? So that's one point. I think it would, would be very predictive if we can take notes of what your request is and we put it down as a good takeaway from the meeting. And it'd be good to hear. I mean, this is a very good request. We take that down, right? We'll take that, we'll take a note down and then we can, we can, we can, we can talk about. And I also like to hear your thoughts on what Justin was saying, right? And I try to find a common ground for both parties. I mean, I, does it make sense? Could I, could I just bring this back to, um, I, I, I agree. I think we need to be focused on common ground initially. I think the things we have clashes on can come later or even in a separate meeting, maybe. I don't think we need to make any conclusions here. But the, the common ground that we've identified is this issue with, issue with Ned and what Ned sold, right? I, I personally believe that there is a, there's a win in this for both of us to, to pursue some kind of joint agreement within the between the community and Tron to say that we we both understand that whatever it was that Ned sold, he didn't fully explain it. And I, I think that from, from your side, that would do you well to gain respect or understanding from the community. I think the community would appreciate that as well. Um, maybe there's some eventual actions that are taken from that later, 
but certainly an initial agreement that we both agreed that Ned didn't didn't say what this was and an, agree, an agreement potentially to then act on that later, I think is, a, is, a, is an interesting thing that might be interesting to hear your, your take on. I would also like to shame in and, and say, I don't know if you are aware of this, but on the Steam blockchain, there is an operation that declines voting rights in witness voting. And it was originally developed by Steam at Inc in order for it to be applied to itself to hold its own uh, promise to the community. Do you see anything from, from all of these, uh, these chats or that you can be assured of from our side that would make you consider executing a command like that, which would uh, really, I mean, the tokens are still uh, transferable and all of that. It's still the same tokens. It's just that they can't do with voting. And I, I just want to throw it out there that that would give a lot of confidence to many of the users out there who you've probably seen are very passionate about this chain and cares a lot. Mm. What, what's uh, this question um, exactly about? It is an operation that allows an account to permanently decline voting rights in consensus voting. So the tokens are still all the same, except they cannot be used on that particular account to vote witnesses. Uh, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. I, I may ch check with the team later. Uh, I, I think what he, this is Luke Stokes, um, also a witness. What he's saying is that you previously described no interest in participating in politics or governance, and the Steam blockchain provides a mechanism for you to publicly on-chain communicate that to the community. It's called De Decline Voting Rights Operation. It's a command that you can run on your account that would demonstrate to the community that these tokens will not participate in governance. And that is something that we as a community have been really trying to get Ned and Steam Incorporated to do. Uh, if you, we can give you some backstory to this. A year ago, there was a large group of people that were very, very upset with Ned and the community at Steam Incorporated, what was going on, and we're trying to get this operation to happen. If you were to do that, I think it would be a good signal to the Steam community that exactly what you said, you don't want to participate in governance, you just want uh, the, everyone to do well financially. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would like to like learn like all the history, even though I, I have no idea about this right now. Yeah, there's a, a sorry. May I? May I? Step in? Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, this is Draco talking. I'm a I'm a witness. Um, so so basically, you acquired something, and you said earlier that you did due diligence, but obviously and apparently you didn't do any due diligence, because from what I see is you don't understand how the the blockchain works, how the governance works and what the uh, the stake that you bought was intended for correct i uh, i will can, i can chime in for this when we're doing the due diligence and uh, again there's a lot of things under nda that cannot speak here um but uh, the simple answer to that is we were dealing with net directly and we were doing the diligence um with uh the limited Mm, we're doing the we're doing the due diligence based on all the accessible document that Net could at the time provide us. Also, he also signed off um, that uh, he can send that uh, these uh, these up to his knowledge. So I think the key handing up a uh, key point everybody is circulating again here is you know that whatever Net promise was but it's not part of our deal. And it's, we only got what Nets, um, whatever material that Nets provided. So the target here is not, you know, if anything, I would suggest is not Justin Sun, the target is Net. And also, right. also I would call out, I, I know what you're gonna say, uh, Netosho, uh, but I tried to call out here is like, a, you know, other people mentioned about other people have been mentioned about like what we Tron can do to, 
to Steam, and also the roadmap is committed. Um, I think I think let's focus on the wing wing side here. Meaning, uh, Justin is doing Tron is coming in trying to work with the Steam and Steam community to build a brighter um, business together, and that's still the intention. Um, I, I think let's make you know make clear what's the issue hanging up here. If the net issue, let's go pursue net net. And if we, you know, can find a common ground to work together for everybody to make more uh, financially successful, uh, I think we can target that and talk about how we can achieve that. All the- right. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Hey, on, on that note, I would say that uh, I think both sides have a little bit more, you know, due diligence to go perform, you know, prepare for the next time that we do come together. Uh, the win-win is a situation that we definitely are looking for. That's, that's the goal. That's why we're talking about the declined voting rights that's, you know, on the blockchain. It fits with what your guys are talking about. It's obviously something that needs to be looked into a little bit more technically by your side. And y'all should take that time, I, I think probably now. And we should also reconvene and probably go ahead and wrap this up now. I don't know if anything more is going to be accomplished tonight. I, I still would, would personally like the Twitter retraction, obviously. I but mean, no, no, if that's not, if that's really not gonna noted. happen, yeah, but but I think really we should noted. probably, uh, probably uh, you know, I don't think anything else is gonna be accomplished further here tonight. Well, I do not agree, actually. I think it's, uh, I think uh, uh, circling back to what Justin was saying, I think that what we want to do is fairly clear. Apparently community was an issue with Ned, I'm happy to exist, and honestly, we should, you know, ask Ned about these questions. Um, but I think what do we try to accomplish here is we simply, like I can I can speak for I just I chime in to speak for Justin a little bit and correct me Justin if you want, but uh, you know there's no hostility for us to come in purely based on the good investment return perspective. Now uh, in terms of ho- anything hostile a hostile technology network perspective, we could have done that way before we announced the PR right, which didn't happen. And for, a, yes, as a 20, hard fork under 2.5 happened, but you can see the code as it's, as, trans, as open source. As, wait, as wait, a, wait, wait, wait. So, so you may not be aware, which is kind of a surprise to me because you're in the Steam Dev Slack. I'm not because I left because it was very unproductive. But before the soft fork took place, probably eight days before, there was, you know, communications in the Steam Dev Slack about it taking place. No. So, so, look, 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 look. This, is, this is getting into a back and forth. And again, I don't find this personally productive. So I've, I've been someone that's been talking up. I will be bidding you goodbye. It has been nice meeting you guys. And I, I think we should re- arrange a new conversation for another time. You know, it's, it's getting pretty late in the, you know, central time zone where I am. It's 9 p.m. I don't know about you. But this needs to, you know, end for me. So thank you. All right. Thank you for your time. Yo. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. You. But uh, for the rest of the guys, I mean, we, uh, I think this, uh, we should circle back to see how can we push this forward, right? Several notes taken. And uh, um, Justin said he just wants to, you know, essentially, uh, our bottom line is very clear. Um, governance is not what we pursue. Only thing pursue, if any, we want to uh, downvote and unlock these exchange funds. So let's get over that. And uh, we'll downvote as well. And uh, we just move forward. I think that's as simple as that. Um, what, can I ask you, why, why would you only allow the power down for the, the faster power down for the exchanges? Uh, I mean, from our point of view, it's important that exchanges cannot do voting or it should be as hard for them as possible to participate in voting. So sure. I'm curious, a- why do you think uh, it, it should be just for the exchanges that they need to have a faster power down? Sure. Oh, um, so that, that's also like one of the like a situation we are facing here is there is... T- there is not like a united person of the community, you know, like every community members have their voice. So if we, for example, if we agree to like community member A, maybe witness A's idea, it's maybe against like community B's willingness, you know. The, the, the reason why we 
put exchange to be the only one is because a lot of the witness, of course, even in this meeting, is against of reduce the power down period of the the older people. So that's why we we only selected the exchange. But uh, first of all, I think the community at large made it very clear today what they thought about uh, Fork uh, 225, just looking at the block producer voting that's happened in the last 24 hours. And secondly, uh, the idea of allowing witness, no, sorry, exchanges to have influence in witness voting is seen as a very serious security issue, simply because it allows any large exchange to do uh, something that it did just now, except that it could have been in any direction, really, just based on who has good relationships with those exchanges. So basically, um, I think you, your concern has point. We definitely will take that into consideration. Um, but I mean, the, the community member we need to listen to is like numerous. So. So we, we have to like make the decision. I mean, try to satisfy everybody's demands, right? But we, we can't basically like satisfy 100% of like everybody's demand. Right, but if, if you look at the votes on our witnesses and look at the votes on your witnesses, you'll see the community backs the choices we're making. We don't make the choices ourselves. The community makes the choices uh, that we give to you. And I can uh, tell uh, you from the people that vote for me, they are not going to want to see the exchanges being able to liquidate and power up within a day. Because things like what Binance just did this past week, right now they locked up their entire liquid uh holdings and now you want us to allow them to liquidate that immediately so that they have the money to pay their people <laughs> their customers they shouldn't have done that in the first place so it, it's not right to allow exchanges to get involved with customer funds on a dpos system the community is here and they are voting and if you want the community, look at where they're, where they're going. You can see by the votes on the chain that they support what the normal consensus witnesses were doing for this chain. So, so the question right now is, are you going to, uh, since you, you really don't want to interfere with governance, are you going to uh, retract all these witness votes that you put in the top 20 with your friends at the exchanges? First of all, uh, exchange is not my friends. Second okay. thing. Okay, whatever. Um, second thing, we just want to make sure our funds and the exchange of the customer funds is safe. So we will withdraw like all the vote. When the exchange's we... customer funds is their problem. That's not our concern. What they did was unethical and probably illegal to tie up the customer's funds in some enterprise that locks it down for 13 uh, weeks. This is not our concern. That's their problem to deal with. Uh, our just concern to that, is uh, we... to restore governance to our blockchain. I, I would, I'm sorry, sorry guys to chime in here. I mean, I think the fastest track to restore governance is uh, honestly like a take with Justin's suggestion. Uh, let Justin stake out of this so that, uh, you know, um, you know, there's no intention for us to get involved in the governance. Like you said, this is the given the governance back to the community and we're, we're fully supporting that. We're no interest would, into would that. You, would you guys offer that for, it was, it was asked before, but I'm not sure if it was clear. Would you guys voluntarily offer that for to set, it, set your account so that it cannot vote on chain in the code of the blockchain itself? So that it can't vote for witnesses. Would you guys consider that? I think everything is on the table. We can definitely talk about it. I need to, like as Justin said, we need to understand uh, the mechanics a bit more. I mean, like uh, if, if, if it give you guys a bit of history, 
we literally met Steam's team like two weeks ago uh, to go through like a, the technicality part of that. Just a bit of a history on that. So we'd like to learn more about how we can do this. And uh, please understand from the pure business perspective, uh, we have a lot of good ways to spend our time on other deals and here and there. Uh, the least thing we want is to get into the politics or governance because it's it's not helping. We'd rather help the ecosystem um, to bring more resources. I think that's the right way to spend our time. That's more valuable. So I think the fastest way we can, I think we can, if we can just figure out the fastest way for us to um, not be part of, uh, how to say, to, 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 to find a way for us to, uh, 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 to solve the current um, situation, um, you know, reverse back to uh, the community, uh, the, the exchange funds back to where they're supposed to be and, uh, and put everything back in order. We have zero uh, intention to take on the governance. So that is rest assured. I want to call that out loud if it's not clear. Uh, to, does, does it make sense to you guys? Yeah, that, that is very much um, an interesting point you're making and something that we were hoping to hear from this meeting. So it's certainly something that will make people uh, listen, listen up a little bit more. And, Wait, and yeah. I, I'd, I'd like to ask, I, I don't mean to interrupt, I just, could you clarify, you said let the exchanges move their funds where it's supposed to be. I'm not aware of any funds being sent anywhere where it's supposed to be. Could I you think it means retur that? return back to normal, return back to like it was before. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, they so have to power down, and it takes thirteen weeks. Exactly. That, I it. mean, that's the only option. There is no other option. But it's I don't think mess. that's going to happen it's with uh, hard fork. I mean, uh, that's not on Steam to to change the blockchain rules to allow exchanges who decided themselves to power up users' funds. I mean, they they knew they had to take on that uh, that risk. I mean, they know Steam. They've used Steam for a long time. I mean, there, there's not going to be a hard fork that just does that. I, I, I have a hard time seeing that. That's yeah. a huge security risk. You would be destroying this blockchain if that happened. It would be destroyed. There would be no more steam. Sorry, guys. I'm, it's not the. It's, it's not. I think there's a lot of nitty gritty piece of it. I, I, the, the whole intention is today to have an open channel and have this open conversation. But I guess we already achieved certain points because uh, we are running a bit short on time already, uh, which is originally booked for an hour. But to quick sum up, I mean, I think you guys heard from Justin Sun. His positioning, I think, is a lot of clear. He has no interest or intention from the very beginning to involve in the governance. And what we want to do is try to get things back into what it, what it is today, uh, what it was before, um, so that, uh, um, you know, the governance is back in the community, um, Justin gets his investment back. I think that's the bare minimum we're looking at this thing. Um, you know, I think you want the same thing as well. I mean, I think you guys did a fairly good job for the Steam community. And I really appreciate that, and I hope there's a more ways for us to try uh, to come in and invest and help. I think uh, you know a lot of our members would agree on that as well, because we are building a better, a bigger system together. I believe so. Still, as of today, um, just a lot of us just start of start of everything sort of a round foot. I know that there's a lot of history, but let's don't hold too much on that because we just need to move forward. Um, so a lot of notes to take to take in. Uh, we'll have internal discussion between Justin and the team and Steam is Steam. Uh, we try to come up an, an actionable item. Again, we we're not trying to make a conclusion today, but uh, at least everybody, other community members, and and uh, appreciate your time to make it in the, at the short notice. Uh, at least now you, you can hear from Justin's son directly. You know his real intention, um, and, and uh, let's figure out an actionable items. Uh, 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 maybe an additional cause or when they need to take place, but let's let's. Uh, I think that today we need to wrap up, unfortunately, given the time. But uh, you know, thank you everybody for uh, for for a time, and uh, and uh, let's. It'll be good if we can also Elizabeth can help uh, coordinate a kind of a, a a Slack or a Telegram group or whichever uh, to have this open channel. Maybe we should use the same channel for the next meeting or conversation. But thank you everyone for the time.
Yeah, one thing, can, can you guys please um, update your w witness price feeds if you're going to be the top 20 because you're breaking the network right now by not doing that? That's one minimum thing you need to do as witness. So please update your price feeds. You're throwing things out of whack. Um, I would go one step further. Please remove those witness votes. That would be nice too, but at least if you're going to not remove your witness votes, which you should, which you said you were going to, just please update the price feeds at the bare minimum. Like that just keeps the chain going because if you don't, it's going to throw the prices all out of whack. How, how, much the, how much the price, the fee will be? Just unvote the witnesses. All our witness notes are set at the right price feed. All you got to do is unvote those POPs, uh, puppet sock accounts. Let our consensus witnesses back in. Our price feeds are working correctly. And we won't touch your stake. Your stake is safe. We just need, basically, we need to be able to get in here to do the right thing because the price feed being out will wreck the network over time. So if I think you want to, you know, be with this community, take the step, let our consensus, let the community witnesses back in control like they were then I think the next meeting could be a lot more productive. So uh, Elizabeth, could you yeah. start, could yeah, you start yeah. the group and uh, collect the, this, I mean, the price feed because none of, not neither just himself, myself are technical on that. And we didn't yeah. do the note. It'd be good if you can help uh, collect the, the action on this particular piece. And then we can circle back with engineers to figure out what's the, what's the thing to do again. Absolutely. I yeah. Said, if anything, uh, we we both want this, the chain to work, and they see that in the, the commitment open letter. So you know, help us to push this smoothly. If, if a can... absolutely. So I mean, the thing is, like, guys, I we all I know your concerns. I've we've had many conversations. An old sage, wide wizard, told me like, when you buy a car, you don't magically become a mechanic, and you can't assume it has secrets. So please work with us and continue like. You know I'm 100% transparent and honest. Like, these guys were sold something, whether it's due diligence or not. Ned sold them a lot of unknowns, and all those unknowns are coming to a head. No one here is trying to do anything malicious. This to work. It's a way for this to come together. This, I mean, there's so much potential and opportunity, and I had such great – the whole team – now, granted, we did, you know, lose some folks, full transparency. You all know that. But the meeting was so productive last week. I mean, this is so fresh and so new. The potential is huge to bring these two entities together, these ecosystems. So let's keep the conversations going. Let's end this call. Um, I will follow up steps. And again, this was our first talk. Like, I appreciate you so much for listening to me coming on this call and being so honest and forthcoming. And so let's just can't let's just keep this going. Like, let's let's move this forward and see what we can do as per professional business people to be for steam and tron no that that's absolutely fair and i appreciate the sentiments there oh also i i talked to the team yeah they they will adjust the, the fee uh asap okay but justin this is follow btc news witness i was one of the consensus witnesses on the chain i just want to make it clear i will not be in another meeting unless you unvote your I mean, I'm just being, I'm, and I'm not trying to be rude. Uh, I, I appreciate you coming and talking with us this evening, but I will not be attending another meeting until those pops up suck, until your witnesses are, uh, it's late here, so I'm having a hard time speaking. I need you to remove <laughs> those witnesses and let the community witnesses back in, and I would be happy to continue speaking with you and let's grow this uh, chain together. But until you know, the community's back in charge of the chain that we built, then I, I don't have anything more to uh, participate in these talks about. Leave your stake alone. That's fine. We don't care about it. We're not going to touch it. That's your stake. We, when we froze it, we did make a mistake there. We act offensively. But all you got to do is vote our witnesses back in, unvote your witnesses, and you're free to do what you want with your stake. As long as it's not uh, disrupting the chain as it has been. I would just like to add that, that that's that's not necessarily the opinion of the whole community. I don't think that everyone believes that we made a mistake. I think that the um, there are a lot of rational reasons behind why that was done. It was a temporary fix, um, and it was meant so that we could talk about how to progress with that stake, and then also secure the chain 
and come up with a way that we both agree with to manage that state whilst securing the chain. That was our main, that was the witness's main prerogative. And some people think it was a mistake. Some people think it wasn't, but yeah, guys, the witness has not agreed. I, agree. I mean, guys, I mean, there's a, everybody has an opinion. It's, it's totally fine. I mean, I think for the time's sake and the more product perspective, let's find the most actionable item for both part, uh, for everyone. Um, so we'll, we'll figure out what we can do here. Please work with us. Uh, I know what you want. And uh, uh, we'll discuss to make it a more, more action, actionable and the easiest way for everyone. How does that sound? Sounds good. Yep. All right. Look forward cool. to the next one. We'll set yep. up an agenda for the next one. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks so Thanks. much. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Bye.